Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you guys are all doing super well. Um, today I'm gonna film a tag video. I love filming tag videos actually, I'm realizing. They're so much fun because like they make you go through your collection and kind of like re-look at everything. And I recently watched Kat's video, um, I think it's titled Get to Know My Luxury Handbag Tag. <clears throat> I think she basically was inspired by a makeup tag and then recreated the tag into a luxury handbag tag. I'm pretty sure she also did one for small leather goods. But anyways, I watched her handbag one and I was inspired. I wanted to do film um, my version of it. So let's just jump right into it, guys. I have the questions on my phone and the bags next to me. I would have, of course, already shown Kat's Instagram and YouTube on the screen, but I'll also link her, her version of the video down below. Um, and yeah, let's just jump right into it. Okay. So question number one is the newest bag into your collection. And this is the newest bag into my collection. This is the little vintage pistachio green in the suede material that I got off of Estée not too long ago. I am obsessed with this little cutie so, so, so much. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to take out photos with this yet, even though I have worn it out twice now. I just didn't do anything cute that day or didn't get a chance to take my outfit photo. But um, yeah, definitely adore this bag so much. Besides the gold-plated CC, the mirror, you guys know, is my favorite thing about this bag. Um, so I'm showing it, I'm angling that weirdly because I don't want to show right outside my window, basically. Um, but yeah, and then here's the interior with a pocket. It's just a shame that it's been raining recently, so I've just been too nervous to bring her out. But hopefully when the weather looks a bit more okay, I will use her more. Like I actually want to show you guys one more bag because this is another new bag. Um, I just haven't shared it yet. It's technically as new as this one. I actually, actually no, this next bag actually is the new is newer than this one because I ordered this, then I bought this, and then this arrived because I ordered this online, so it took a couple days to arrive. Whereas I bought this in store. So <clears throat> this is another vintage bag. I'll just show it to you guys. I bought this little Gucci tote, and um. I got it at Luxury Promise, which is the same place I ordered my little Chanel pouch necklace from my Chanel haul video recently. Um, I saw this on the Instagram for an insane price as well, again. So I had this idea that I can fold the bag like very similarly to the Chanel, one of the Chanel styles, which I don't know the name of, so I'll pop a picture here. But yeah, they have a style where it's kind of like folded like that. But I don't know, it's just like, it looks a little odd with that one because it's like formal but not formal. This one is like, I don't know, to me, I feel like this looks really, I don't care. I'm just running out the door. I'm just running a quick errand, androgynous. Like there's just like some kind of vibe going on with this bag, which I really, really like. So um, as well as the price point of this was really good. That's why I picked it up. Just a massive Mary Poppins hole inside with no pockets. Um, of course, you can wear it like this, which I also really like. I think the size of it is cute enough to do that. Um, but yeah, I think I will prefer wearing it folded. So the second question is the oldest bag in your collection. And the oldest bag in my collection is my little mini Papillon cylinder Louis Vuitton bag. Um, I adore this little bag. And I believe this is the mini, at least at the time that we got it, it was the smallest size. It was a medium and then a large. My mom got the large one for herself and then she treated me to this little mini one. Um, I actually got this when I was super young. Um, I must have been like fifth grade or sixth grade. I think fifth grade, so I think I was like, I don't know, 10-ish, but me younger. I don't, I really can't remember, but yeah, around then. I adore this so much. And honestly, I think this is the reason why I haven't bought like the micro speedy in just the normal monogram because I have this, which is similar size, it's just in a different shape. And I like that it's in a different shape because not everybody has this little mini version. So I really love this. Next question is the most expensive bag in your collection. And I believe I had the same answer when I filmed a similar tag before, but I think it's still the Chanel reissue. This is the Taiwan limited edition one, I believe, from what my mom told me, because she bought it for me. There was only 20 of these made. So yeah, super limited, and it says Taiwan there. Literally anytime anyone looks at this bag, I'm like, it says Taiwan right there. <laughs> um, 
I've definitely shared this bag before, so apologies if you guys are sick of seeing this bag. I am just never going to be sick of seeing this bag. Um, and again, it says Chanel Exclusive Edition for Taipei. This was a limited edition bag um, for the flagship store, like the biggest flagship store that they opened there. I think that's why they had this. But yeah, I adore this bag so much. It's lambskin, so it is pretty... Um, it is pretty delicate, but I actually did use this bag as like almost an everyday bag at, for like a good two weeks when I bought it somewhere on vacation. I can't remember where. So it, there is a little bit of wear on this compared to the rest of like my super special Chanel bags that I don't use as often. They look a little, they definitely look more clean. There is a pen mark there as well. A couple little pen marks there. Um, so yeah, my mom bought this for me, like I said, for my 18th birthday. She actually got me the matching long wallet as well. Um, and yeah, this would be the most expensive bag in my collection, I believe. Next is the least expensive bag in your collection. I brought two out because I couldn't decide between these two. I mean, I couldn't decide between a couple, but I'll explain in a second. This one, I believe, is still the most, the cheapest bag in my collection. Um, this is a Stella McCartney clutch. It's super massive and I got this like when I first discovered um, TK Maxx. So yeah, I got this in TK Maxx, which is why this makes this Which is why it makes this the cheapest handbag. I believe it's actually really soft and cuddly at the time The hounds hounds tooth print wasn't super popular um, But it's another print that I feel like um, or pattern I feel like that always recycles kind of like leopard print so I got it anyway and last Christmas, Chanel did a whole freaking collection with the houndstooth prints. So, um, yeah, I was pretty chuffed that I had this little clutch to play around with the trend a little bit. So I feel like this is my cheapest handbag that I spent money on. But if you're talking about like not going to TK Maxx, like talking about just buying it from the brand itself, I feel like Stod would be my. I have a couple Stod bags, or maybe just two. This is a cute little white um, structured handbag that I bought um, right before going to Lake Como with Kyle last year. I use this a lot. I love white bags and yeah, this has the faux croc um, effect going on as well. Yeah, I feel like brands like this, like Stowed, same as like By Far, which I also have, but I feel like By Far is still a little bit more expensive than Stowed. Um, am I even pronouncing their brand name right? <laughs> I feel like th these are good brands to invest in like super colorful bags or trendy bags if you um, don't want to invest too much into them like mini bags and stuff like that I feel like looking they have so much option and it's really cute and yeah they always suck me in with their with their cuteness and their trendiness <laughs> by the way obviously i am picking out bags that are all within my london collection i do have a lot more affordable um non-designer handbags back in in hanoi um but they're all there but yeah, all my non-designer or non-branded bags, just like some cheap fun ones which I shared in my handbag collection video um, that I collected when I was super young. Those are probably my, my most affordable as well as like some Sanrio stuff that I have most likely, like little pouch, little bags and stuff. So those are probably my most um, affordable or least expensive bags. These two are just the ones I can find in London. Um, next question is my everyday bag. Okay, for my everyday bag, this was a hard one for me because I change my bag every day, but I had a real good think and I still feel like the Chanel minis are best everyday bags for my lifestyle. Um, more specifically, the rectangular mini, obviously, because it does fit my phone. Um, but yeah, I have several of these in different colors. They're just so easy to throw over and yeah, I just feel like um, there's not one that I feel like I use most of but like in general like out of I don't know like four that I have I think four or five um, I alternate between them a lot because yeah these are just such easy bags to use and I always bring one on vacation with me because yeah they always work in with an outfit so and then and the next question is bag with the best memory attached to it so the bag that I picked for this answer is the same bag that I picked um, from when I first did a similar tag and it has to be my Chanel classic flap in the caviar white white silver um, hardware and the double flap so apologies to people who have heard the story like a million and one times I've definitely shared this before but the reason this bag holds the best memories there's several reasons 
One being it was my first ever Chanel handbag. But more importantly, I bought this bag on a trip that I took with my parents. And it was one of the first extended holidays I got to take with them. Usually when I travel with them, I travel with them separately, first of all. It's very rare that we do like a whole, like all three of us. And if we do, it's only over to Australia. And yeah, we do stay longer times in Australia, but when we like travel, travel, it's never for long. Um, and yeah, it's always with like one parent or another. So um, this was like kind of like the first holiday where they both were able to take a solid amount of time off of work. And we did like a huge family vacation to Singapore, um, London and Paris and we actually went to Paris specifically to go to Rue Cambon to buy my first ever Chanel bag. Um, also wanted to see, um, see Paris as well but I had, my, my mom knew I was eyeing this bag since we were in Singapore and I was eyeing it in London so she and my dad surprised me and booked tickets to Paris and the first thing we did was go to get my bag and I was so happy walking out of the store with my first bag with my first Chanel bag. And that is why this holds so much good memory. So next is a bag that's worth its hype. And I've chosen a genre for this one because I don't have a specific, specific bag, but I think Loewe, Loewe basket bags are honestly worth their hype. They have so many different styles, so many sizes. And I think that the price points are amazing. At least that they, at least they were, I haven't seen them recently. Maybe, I don't know if they've like changed the pricings or anything, but the ones that I have seen, I feel like the prices are great. This obviously kind of depends on where you live because maybe this is not the most appropriate bag for London unless, well right now, unless it's summertime and you want to go to the, the park for picnic, this is great. But yeah, it just depends where you live. This is something that I should honestly just leave in Asia because I will use it a lot more there. I did use it a lot more there. I rarely use it here, but I brought it here because I was thinking if I go on vacation, I'd love to bring this with me um, to the beach or anything. For me, this really fits into my lifestyle because I love going to the beach and I love going to markets, night markets as well. I love night markets, they're the best. Um, wish London had a bigger night market life. And um, in Vietnam, I like to bring this to the fruit market and pretend I have my life together and just like look super grown up with my Loewe shopping basket with fruit in it. But <laughs> So yeah, I get that this is not for everyone's lifestyle, but these popped up everywhere last summer and um, Feel like I still saw them this summer. I still think these are great and yeah, worth the hype for sure. So the next question is a bag that is not worth its hype. And this one is hard for me to admit because I absolutely love this brand so much. Um, I have to emphasize that everything else I've bought from this brand, I absolutely adore and I think it is worth its hype. But this bag, which I'll share right now, this is the Bottega pouch bag that everyone and their mother bought in like multiple colors and sizes. I only have one and I'm so glad I only got one. I love the idea of this bag, but I just feel like it's really hard for this bag to look good. Um, maybe in photos they look okay because you can hide, you know, you can, but I feel like in real life they just look like, I don't know, it just doesn't look good. It, it just looks like a blob next to you, um, especially because I don't carry that much in my bag. I carry like my wallet, my phone, my keys. And, um, and my camera sometimes, which I love that it fits in here, it's great, and don't get me wrong, I like big bags, but because this doesn't get stuffed enough, this just kind of like sags and looks bad kind of thing, and you kind of always have to like kind of poof it out and like always have to make sure it looks good. So it, this, I don't know, it's just not the most convenient bag for me. I feel really guilty because I really wanted this for ages and um, got this one in Paris with my parents. I don't know, some people can really pull it off though. All right guys, I just had to leave my camera to charge for a little bit, but we are back. And the next question is, um, favorite bag from favorite brand? And I understood this question as my favorite handbag brand, because like with the different categories, like ready to wear or shoes or whatever, I have different favorites. But when it comes to handbags, uh, my favorite brand is of course Chanel. And of course I had a hard time deciding which one was my favorite, but one of my favorite, 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 favorite handbags is this one. It had to be the gold extra large flap. It's a single flap. And yeah, it's in this gorgeous champagne gold color and it's just so beautiful and squidgy and luscious and I love this so much. This sits super proudly on the top of shelf, like on its own. It's the only bag that has its own shelf. Um, not for any particular reason. I mean, besides the fact that it doesn't fit anywhere else. 
um, but still this is really probably on its own and I just love looking at her. She's so amazing. And I remember when I first bought this, I said that I would probably mostly use it for traveling, like as a traveling bag. And honestly, I've only used it once as a travel bag, or like on a day trip, but I've been using it so much more as just like a normal day out bag because I realized that this just fits so much stuff, especially when I have to do some returns. Or I don't know, when I just like have some small things I buy and I don't want to like carry another bag, I can just put everything in here on my shopping in here, like snacks and stuff. So yeah, I love this bag for just a normal day out as well. It is big, but I've not stuffed it enough that it hurt my shoulder, so that's nice. Um, and I always just get so many compliments when I wear it, so I just, yeah. I love this bag so much. <laughs> Number 10 is most used handbag. And honestly, I suck at these tags because I always cheat. I have three bags to share because I honestly couldn't just choose one, especially like I said, I change my bag out every day. Um, but I, I, was just, I was just looking at 2020 and I was thinking, okay, so the beginning of the year, I spent most of it in Asia. So I picked out a bag that I used mostly there, the bag that I used most there. Then I picked out a bag that I most used in London when I got back and then one for the few travel bits that I did um, this year basically. So the bag that I used most when I was in Asia is this Bottega Arco bag. Um, I got this at Heathrow, it's suede and um, it's got this gorgeous vibrant green color as you can see. I adore this bag so much and I got so much wear out of it as you can see. There's a lot of wear on the handles from rubbing against my, my body, I guess. This, um, this mark here is probably one that bothers me the most because it's like an awkward like color. It might, it might be makeup actually. So anyways, so I'm super, I'm super careful with this now. When I did notice so much wear, I decided to give it a bit of a rest. I remember in the beginning, I was worried about the top bit not being really secure and that people can just get in my bag. But I mean, maybe it's because I was wearing it mostly the entire one. I, it's quite safe there, so I wasn't too worried. Although, of course, I still have my eye on it. But um, because I wear this bag, obviously, with the hand held like that or on the crook of my arm, I'm always like kind of inside of my bag, so I'm not too worried. It's not like a bag where you swing around your shoulder and you, can, you, can, you won't notice if someone reaches around from behind or anything. So, yeah, I just um, really like this bag i was quite shocked how much i would like this style as well i thought you know it's a cute style but you know the color is what sold me but now i'm like actually the style is really really like convenient easy to get in and out of um and yeah easy to style again and then coming back to london it was still warm for a little while so i was able to wear summer colors for a little while and i feel like this was used a lot um like I said, I change my bag out a lot, but I feel like I reach back for this a little bit more than some of the others. Um, this was a bag that my mom bought me from Singapore like last summer, and she got it towards the end, so I didn't get such a long time to wear this before it was like winter time, and I just kind of put this aside. But um, this summer, I really, really, really wore this a lot um, because of this pastel and this green. It just worked really well in my wardrobe, and yeah, I absolutely love this. i pretty sure I shared this in like another video recently as well so I won't talk too much about it you guys know how much I love that bag and then lastly for travel I have to say the Dior book tote truly is a really good travel tote um, to a point where I bought a second one the same size and actually the funny thing is I remember when I bought this one which is the first one I was like oh I really want it in like the smaller size that they were coming out in but anyways after using this one for a small amount of time before I bought my second one I decided to get the same big size because it just is a good size to fit everything in I mean it would maybe be better if they had a strap I mean it would be better for sure functionally um, if they had like a shoulder strap as well like a longer shoulder strap like maybe from here to here, but I don't know if it'll make the bag look uglier. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think it would if they had like a little hook on the inside Where you can like attach the strap They should do that um, Then maybe it just like the bag isn't gonna be sturdy enough. I don't know So yeah now I've decided at least for now. I'm not really keen on getting the smaller sizes um, Not even the mini. I mean everybody knows the mini has like the weird handle So I don't really love that number 11 is the most underrated handbag and I chose another Chanel handbag, guys, but annoyingly, I don't know the name of this handbag. Um, I know it came out in 2016 from the Authenticity Code Inside. I tried Googling it right before filming and I couldn't find it, so if anybody knows, I'd really super appreciate it. 
To me, this bag looks like the more chilled out, the more casual version of the Coco Handle bag. Um, besides the shape being quite similar, it has obviously the top handle, the CC closure, the um, pocket at the back, and the um, shoulder strap, although the Coco Handle has a longer sh uh, shoulder strap. This one I love because this sits super comfortably on my shoulder. This is like the perfect level I want my bag to be at to take things out. It's just super easy for me. Um, and I can rest my shoulder on this nicely, hold it if I'm feeling like I need to hold it better in dodgy areas, I don't know. But yeah, also the feet at the bottom. I think the main difference is that the Coco Handle is like fully stitched leather, so it's so much more structured. This one only has a leather at the bottom, which I really like because it creates a really sturdy bottom. But I love how the top is just super slouchy. And yeah, it just makes this bag much more like wearable from my um, wardrobe, I think, because I don't know, yeah, it's just much more casual and everyday use. Um, and like I said, I just really love where this bag sits on me when I go out. Um, and I do own the Coco Handle in a very similar size. It's a large size. Um, it might be a little bit smaller than this. This might be a tiny bit bigger. But I honestly prefer using this bag over. I mean, my Coco Handle is in this gorgeous mermaid blue color. So I love staring at that. It's definitely more beautiful to look at. This one is just much more functional. It's still a very beautiful bag. Um, yeah, I adore this. This is a bag that my mom gave me, actually. What else? Um, yeah, the size of this bag I really, really love as well. It's just a little bit smaller than the extra large flap. So um, it serves like similar purposes in, in the sense that like I can use this for running errands. Um, it's good for when I do like little shopping, if I like pop into booths or whatever, I can fit my folding umbrella in here as well. It just fits a lot. Um, it's also, I think, a really good work bag if you have like a MacBook Air or a smaller laptop or a tablet that will fit in here. Maybe, um, maybe not the bigger laptops though. But yeah, I really do love this bag and every time I wore it out, I got so many compliments and whenever I posted pictures, I'd get DMs all the time asking to buy this off me and this one's not for sale, unfortunately, but I can understand why people want to buy it. It's stunning. So yeah, I just didn't see a lot of people rocking this bag or actually really anyone at all, at least in real life. I didn't see anyone in real life rocking this. Um, maybe in some photos I've seen other people wearing it, but I hope Chanel comes out with more of these like top handle, like more casual cocoa handle bags, if that makes any sense. Yeah. All right, last two. Number 12 is most nostalgic bag. This one was super easy for me. Um, it had to be this bag here, which again, I don't know the name of, <laughs> from Louis Vuitton. Um, this was a hand-me-down for my mom. And from as long as I can remember, this was her travel bag. From all the travel, like going back and forth from to Taiwan and Australia when I was younger, that's where we traveled the most to. I just remember this bag being used the entire time. Um, and I believe in like middle school, she like retired this bag and gave it to me. Excuse me guys, oh, stuffing. Here's the inside. I've definitely shared this before, but I thought to share in case you guys haven't seen my previous video on it, but it's got the old phone little slot there for the old phones. This will not fit an iPhone anymore. And then, I don't know, another pocket there and some pen holders. I remember using this bag a lot back then because obviously I didn't have as many designer bags as I do now. But yeah, I haven't used it in a while, um, but I still keep it here with me in London because I like looking at it. It's such a cool archive piece and I feel like it will make a cool outfit and like, you know, it's for an outfit for an occasion. Um, but yeah, it just, holds a lot of really fun, nostalgic memories. So I love this bag. Last question I believe is the most disappointing bag. And this is a recent bag that I shared. This has to be my most disappointing purchase. So yeah, it's the Dear Cadillac bag. And from my previous video, I mentioned that the reason I am disappointed in this bag is because the seller didn't disclose that the zipper was missing and he labeled this bag is very good condition and I realized only afterwards when I received the bag, I went back to look at, back at the pictures, that um, he kind of hid any photos where, you, where the, you would see the zipper. So that's why I didn't notice that when I bought it. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm not going to return it because that's the only fault. Everything else is pretty perfect. Besides the fact that it's not in my most favorite color combination, I still love the bright red. 
well it's more like a cherry red actually but yeah i still love the red um and like i said everything else is in perfect condition it's just a zipper so i'll fix it myself but still probably my most disappointing purchase anyways that is the end of this tag video i hope you guys enjoyed getting to know my handbag collection a little more i feel like some of it was a little bit repetitive from past videos that i filmed but i hope that's okay i hope you guys still enjoyed it please do give this video a thumbs up if you guys liked it um leave any comments you guys have down below and hit the subscribe button if you guys haven't already and would like to come and catch up with me again and until my next video i'll see you guys next time bye